We've just been listening to the Department, the release of the Department of Justice report, which of course found a pattern and practice of of. Um, Racial well, injustice and just a number of issues with the department. Again, they have been investigating force. Uh, for about 13 months now, and they just released those findings this morning. This all stemming from the release of the video of the shooting death of Laquan McDonald. Uh, a number of big things that they found, a number of things that they said the city has already been working on to address some of these issues as well. And we just heard from the mayor, uh, the police no superintendent, uh, the person over civil rights as well. Right, U.S. Attorney Zach Farden, and of course Loretta Lynch in releasing that report. And right. Um, right now, I think we're going to toss it over to Susanna Song. Nope, not to Susanna at this moment. You have been watching. All of these issues are compounded by poor supervision and oversight leading to low officer morale and an erosion in officer accountability. Okay. Good morning, everybody. I'm Roseanne Teus. And I'm Lionel Moist. Thanks again for joining us again. You just heard from the U.S. Attorney General. Breaking right now, the Department of Justice has just released its report on Chicago's policing practices. And we are going to continue to follow that story for you this morning. We have a number of reporters who have been there, including our Susanna Song, who just listened in live to that announcement and the latest details that we got from that report. Good morning, Susanna. Good morning, Lionel and Roseanne. No surprise here with the uh, findings that there are significant systemic deficiencies in the Chicago Police Department. But now moving forward is the response of the city. We've just learned that the city of Chicago and the Department of Justice signed an agreement in principle uh, that would be for reform and making changes to the police department. And that would be the guide to a consent decree. But as you know, the Obama administration is leaving and that will be um, transitioning to the Trump administration. So the mayor just mentioning that he will have to negotiate terms for that consent decree. But again, that would be the next step for the city of Chicago. Let's hear what Attorney General Loretta Lynch had to say a short time ago. And on the basis of this exhaustive review, the Department of Justice has concluded that there is reasonable cause to believe that the Chicago Police Department engages in a pattern or practice of use of excessive force in violation of the Fourth Amendment to the Constitution. Our investigation found that this pattern or practice is in no small part the result of severely deficient training procedures. CPD does not give its officers the training they need to do their jobs safely, effectively, and lawfully. Well, these are some of the unlawful patterns or practices Lynch says the feds discovered in the Chicago Police Department. Shooting at fleeing suspects who presented no immediate threat, shooting at vehicles without justification, using less lethal force, including tasers against people who pose no threat, using force to retaliate against and punish individuals, using excessive force against juveniles. When it comes to accountability, the city failed to investigate the majority of cases it is required to investigate by law and they believe these systemic issues led to a broken trust between police and the community but today is also a moment of great opportunity where we begin from where we move from identifying problems to developing solutions CPD must undergo broad and fundamental reforms sustained through a federal consent decree and independent oversight well, time now to repair that trust and begin a new era of accountability, and that would include properly training Chicago police officers, and then again, as I mentioned, working on that consent decree. Now, Loretta Lynch did mention, even with this new administration coming in, that should not stifle reforms made in the consent decree. We are live here at the Dirksen Federal Building, Susanna Song, CBS 2 News. Roseanne Lionel. Okay, Susanna, thank you. Mayor Rahm Emanuel is not disputing the findings of this report, but he says it does not reflect the city or the Chicago Police Department as a whole. Important to recognize that the incidents of misconduct cited in this report do not represent the values of the city of Chicago, and I believe firmly they do not represent the good work of the vast majority of the men and women of the Chicago Police Department. But I want to be clear the Chicago Police Department, the city of Chicago, is already on the road to reform, and there are no U-turns on that road. CBS 2's Mike Puccinelli is outside police headquarters now, and Mike, Superintendent Eddie Johnson spoke during the news conference, and he's the one who's going to be called on to make these changes. 
You're exactly right, and Eddie Johnson wasn't even superintendent when, of course, the Department of Justice began investigating the Chicago Police Department more than a year ago, but it's certainly his department now, and it's his reputation right now that is on the line. That's why the city's top cop vowed that the department will do better under his watch. Been fully cooperative with the DOJ throughout their investigation, and many of their findings have come as a result of their interviews with CPD personnel. What the findings in their report say to me is that we, CPD, need to do a much better job at mentoring, supporting, and training our police officers. It's what they deserve for putting their lives on the line for us, and that's what the city deserves when we ask for its trust. Now, Johnson says much is already being done to improve the 12,000-member police department. Reforms include live scenario-based training for force mitigation and de-escalation. Recruits are being partnered with teenagers from violent areas. Promotion policy has been changed to make sure it is now always merit-based. And 3,000 officers have already completed crisis intervention training. Now, Johnson also says a new community policing pilot program has already been launched and will be emulated across the city if it is indeed successful and the use of force policy that has already been put into place based in part on the input of the public as well as the officers of course is being put into place as we speak there's also a hotline that has been put into place where the police department officers can call and phone in about misconduct that they see anonymously if they want to reporting live outside police headquarters mike puccinelli cbs2 news lionel roseanne all right, Mike, thank you. Meanwhile, our Suzanne Lemignot is live at St. Sabina Church with Father Michael Flager for his reaction to that big announcement from the report. Hey, Suzanne. Lionel Roseanne, we actually were in Father Flager's office here watching the news conference with him. And Father Flager, you had a myriad of reactions, comments as you were looking at the news conference here on your television screen. Number one thing, your overall takeaway from this. Overall take, I think, is nothing that we don't know as a community and haven't felt and seen before. But now here's the fresh eyes of the Justice Department documenting it and spending 13 months documenting it. This is what they've been looking at. But I think now becomes enforcement. You know, um, and I'm not counting on the next administration to be the, the big brother to make it some force. So the mayor and the superintendent, it's, it's on their desk and the community and the city keeping the pressure on them. All the things, training, not following through with use of force data, complaints, the oversight has been a disaster. And yes, it's been for decades, but it's still going on. And you know, we say that there's a, you know, just a few bad police, but there's a culture throughout the police department that has to be dealt with. Father Flager, the Department of Justice interviewed you as they were preparing this report and doing their research. One of the key things they wanted community input. Yeah, they wanted to talk and we try to set up with young people in the community, with adults in the community, people who had experience with the police, positive and negative. We wanted them to talk and it was difficult because there is this breakdown of trust, but there is the understanding that like they said, if we don't talk to the people, if we don't get these insights, we are not going to be able to do the job well. Father Michael Flager, thank you so much for your reaction to that news conference and the Department of Justice findings. Thank you. Roseanne, Lionel. All right, Suzanne, thank you. Joining us now, CBS2 legal analyst Irv Miller. And Irv has been on the set with us this morning. We got the 100-page report, and you've had a chance to sort of thumb through it. What struck you most? The, one of the first things the attorney general said, that the Chicago Police Department had a pattern and practice of violating the constitutional rights of the residents of the city of Chicago. If you heard nothing else, that should shock you as a resident of the city of Chicago. We have constitutional rights. Our police department systematically tried to deprive us of those rights. And you know, they, they specifically called out people living in certain parts, certain neighborhoods in the south and west sides and, and kind of the ongoing pattern that that causes as well. Something else that stood out as we were looking through this report was their training on the use of force, which is something that they were investigating. And there was a, a point in the report where it mentioned that the video that they were showing was decades old and not even in line with current laws. What are your thoughts on that? Absolutely amazing. I mean, the Chicago Police Department Academy, where officers are trained, should be modern, up-to-date, deal with current laws, current trends, using modern examples of things that happened, such as in Baltimore recently, certainly learn from what happened in the Laquan McDonald case. 
but to use a video that's decades old when you're talking about use of force, it's mind boggling. Now they went on to say that some officers couldn't even verbalize the policy. On yeah, the only one in six. And um, another nugget here from the report. Moreover, we found that some Chicago police officers expressed discriminatory views and intolerance with regard to race, religion, gender, and national origin in public social media forums. You know, the police department, frankly, is a microcosm of society. You know, racism is there. We all know it. We have to deal with it. But to have it institutionalized in a police department and their, their training and their supervision and their promotions, that's the part that's troubling. That it, it didn't solve that problem by what the rules were up till now. And the mayor was really speaking about the duty that you have as a public servant to not be racist, to not make race, racist remarks, to not let racism get into your everyday work. So something clearly that needs to be dealt with as well. Talk to me about this agreement that was signed. What are the next steps for the city, for the police department, for the mayor's office to make a change to some of the big things that came out of this report? The agreement simply says that the city will use reasonable best efforts in good faith to come to an agreement on what a consent decree should be. That's pretty ambiguous. It leaves a lot of leeway. But I think the mayor and the superintendent are reasonable and fair in their assessing this report and what has to be done. Um, I'm optimistic. I think these reforms will take place. I think there will be, if not, a consent decree because our, our new potential attorney general doesn't like consent decrees. But I think the police department on its own is going to recognize their shortcomings and do something about it. Okay. All right. Legal analyst Irv Miller joining us down with more analysis of this. Thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, the Independent Police Review Authority that investigates police shootings released this statement saying, Today is an important milestone for the city. It is our hope that today we will show the nation and the world that we can accept critical feedback with grace and fervent commitment to change. And you can read that entire report by going to our website, cbschicago.com. We'll also hear from former police superintendent Gary McCarthy, who says that he was never contacted for the investigation, which is different from what we just heard. You can hear what else he has to say on our news at 5 and 6.